Today we're going to talk about how to set up um, characters talking in Scratch. So at this point, um, everyone should be logged in and you should be able to see your username in the upper right hand corner. And we're going to click on create. And what we're going to be doing today is actually having two characters tell each other a joke. And so this is one of your assignments and you're going to need to recreate this video exactly the way that I have it recreated. So um, if you need to pause the video periodically, you can do that. So um, after I set up create, I've got my, my scene set up. And um, I'm going to actually start by getting rid of Scratch the Cat. This is one time when I don't really want to have Scratch. I want to have other characters. So I'm going to come up here to the very top and I'm going to click on these um, scissors. And you can see when I move my mouse now, it's actually a pair of scissors. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to click on Scratch to cut him out. And so now it's time for me to set up my scene. And I like to think of setting up a Scratch, um, a Scratch video like a movie. So I think of myself as a movie director and as a movie director it's my job to tell everybody on the screen where they need to be and when they need to be there. So step one, I'm going to decide which stage I want. So I'm going to come over here to the stage and I'm going to open a backdrop from my library and you can pick whatever stage you want. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to go with brick wall one and I'm going to click on OK and it's going to load up my brick wall. So now I have my stage set and whenever I do that it automatically changes um, to the backdrops instead of the scripts. So I'm going to move back over to scripts. Then the next thing I'm going to do is bring in my sprites. And so that is located right here where it says new sprite. And these are the sprites that are already loaded in the library and that's where we're going to start today. So here are my sprites. And the sprites that I'm going to select are girl one. So I like to come over here to category and cut it out to people. So it takes out all the animals and the fantasy and that kind of thing. So all I see is people. And I'm going to find girl one and they're alphabetical. So she's right here. And it loads her. I'm going to pull her over here to the left. And she's going to tell a joke to boy three and he is right here. So I'm going to pull him in and I'm going to pull him over here. So now that I have my character set up, um, I want to go, I want to make sure I, I'm going to click on boy three. And to start the story out for boy three, he has two costumes and I actually don't want him to start out on this costume. I want him to start out on costume B and so I'm gonna go ahead and switch him to costume B now and also when you look at my screen the girl is gonna tell the boy a joke but they're facing the same direction so they're not it doesn't look like they're talking to each other and that's a really easy fix so here in the costumes tab in the upper right hand corner there's rotate options and I'm just gonna simply say flipped left to right and it's going to turn the boy the other direction. Now when I did that for one costume, later on I'm going to use this other costume. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that costume as well. Now that we have all of our characters set up, we're ready to start putting together our actual movie. And so, as I said before, you kind of have to think of yourself as a movie director. And as part of that, you have to tell every single person where you want them to be when the movie starts. So I'm going to start on my stage and I'm going to go to my script. And the very first thing I want to tell it is that when the green flag is clicked, when this movie starts, I want you to look like the brick wall. And this is just a good habit to get yourself into, even though in this particular case it wouldn't be necessary, it would play just fine. It's a good habit to get yourself into setting up those scripts correctly, telling everybody where to start the stage. So the girl, same thing, I'm going to tell her. When the green flag is clicked, but this time I'm going to go to motion and um, the sixth one down says go to X, Y. And as I move the girl about the stage, the X and the Y numbers will actually change. Okay, so I'm going to move her down here a little closer since she's a little taller to make the um, proportions look correct. So I'm going to place her there and then I'm going to say go to this position. So when the green flag is clicked, 
she's going to start right here. And then same thing with the boy. I'm going to tell him. When the green flag is clicked, now he's already where I want him to stand. So I just go to motion and I grab that X, Y block and I tell him to go there. Now I could also move him around the screen, place him where I wanted him to go, and then drag over my X, Y block. But this way, at the beginning of the movie, every single person, including the stage, knows where they're expected to be whenever the movie starts. And we're going to actually have these two sprites speaking back and forth, and they're going to have to take turns. And so one of the most important things to do whenever you are um, putting together a joke or something like this is to pre-plan. Pre-planning is really, really helpful. And um, here's an example of a pre-planning where I've actually sat down with the boy and the girl and I've set up how I want the script to go. So I've told them when the green flags clicked, I want the brick wall one. When the green flag's clicked, I want the girl to go to X and Y, and same thing with the boy. And the reason why I say pre-planning is important is because when you come to them speaking back and forth, we want them to look like they're having a conversation. So when someone's speaking to you, you're waiting, just like I have set up here for the boy, and vice versa. And so by setting this up, on a piece of paper or in a Word document. It just helps you kind of visualize what you're supposed to be doing and where things are supposed to go. So back here on my script, I'm going to start with the girl and I'm going to go to looks. And I'm going to take this say hello for two seconds block and drag it over. And instead of hello, I'm going to double click and she's going to say would you like to hear something odd? Question mark. And she's going to say that for three seconds. I'm going to shrink that so we can read that a little better. And while she's saying that for three seconds, the boy, I'm going to go to control and I'm going to tell him to wait for three seconds. So now that he has waited for three seconds, he is going to respond by saying, sure, I'd love to for three seconds. And while he is talking, the girl is going to wait for three seconds so that when I click my green flag, she'll talk while he waits, he'll talk, and she'll wait. So that's how we go through and we have this exchange between two characters. Now we have to be careful when we're doing this because let's say we have the girl now say, my dog has no nose for two seconds. The boy waits for three seconds and then responds by saying, how does he smell for three seconds? She will wait for three seconds and then say, terrible for two seconds. So now watch what happens. I'm going to make this big so that you can see the full screen. So she talks, he talks, she talks. Then we have this gap, he talks, another gap, and then he talks. So we've got some problems with our coding. So this is where you kind of have to troubleshoot. So when I put terrible, I put that on the boy. I meant to put that on the girl. So I'm going to take it and I'm actually going to drag it and drop it on top of the girl. Actually that didn't work. I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it and delete it. I'm going to go to the girl. I'm going to have her wait for three seconds and then say terrible.
So now let's watch what happens. So she speaks, he speaks, she speaks, then we have the weird gap, he talks, oh, and then we've got this overlap here. So again, we have to go back and continue to troubleshoot. So the reason why that is is because she says my dog has no nose for three seconds while he is waiting for three seconds. So you have to be careful about that. You have to pay attention. Now let's say that when the boy is talking, we want him to switch costumes. And so I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to say switch to costume right before he says how does he smell and I'm going to go to my costumes and I want him to switch to this 3A so that he kind of shrugs his shoulders and it looks like he's asking a question so I'm going to go back to my scripts and I'm going to switch this drop down box to 3A now we've talked about the next costume before but this time we're actually going to have him switch to a specific costume and so Here's how that looks. Now I've got a problem because he actually stayed in this position the whole time. And so again, this is where being a movie director kind of comes into play. And we have to tell it whenever we start the movie, we want the boy to go to this position and to be at costume 3B. So now let's try it. So there, now he's in the correct position. He's just kind of standing there hanging out while they talk to each other and then he's going to shrug his shoulders and say then how does he smell and so here at the end I'm going to make him go back and switch his costume back to 3B so that he goes back to having his hands down by his side so that's kind of how you put together a little bit of a joke or having two characters talk to each other